Hey, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I repaired this really bad attempt at a repair by a homeowner. And this one was pretty unique as the ceiling was thin plywood. And it was a mess, so I'm going to show you how I did that. And I'm going to show you how I used my skim coating blades to get it even flatter quicker. Stick around. Hey everybody, in today's job, what I had was a job where a customer called me and needed numerous repairs done throughout this turn of the century house. And this was one of them that someone had attempted to uh, do in the past. And it's obviously done really poorly, but there was actually repairs all over the house, like some of these right here where somebody just really didn't know what they were doing. They hadn't watched that kilted guy yet. And that was probably their big mistake. <laughs> no, they just didn't know what they were doing. So I, I'm gonna fix this one and I'm gonna walk you through the steps I took to do it because if you come across one like this, there's a few things you wanna do uh, to try and get it to look right. So like you see here, the first thing you wanna do is just go through and scrape all around the repair you're trying to knock off any little dibs that are sticking down that's going to affect you later. Even though we're going to cut this out, I still want to try and smooth up the outer area. Then I used my 24 inch skimming blade to see just how bad it was sagging and how much of a hump there was here. Next, I brought in my oscillating saw with this DeWalt cutting blade on it. And I just went around and cut out the old repair so I could see what's going on here. Then I just removed it from the ceiling and that's when I found out that what the problem is here is this is a plywood ceiling. Now remember this is a turn of the century house so that's quarter inch plywood with half inch drywall put in there. So of course it stuck down a quarter inch. Really bad idea. So the next thing I did is I just cleaned up some more of that extra mud around the edges and since it was painted, it's kind of difficult to remove. So I broke out my oscillating saw again and just kind of chiseled it off until I got it smoothed out a little bit. Then I brought a two by four in for backing and you notice the shims on the bottom. Those cardboard shims are there because I'm trying to raise the backing up high enough above the ceiling plane so that I can still use half inch drywall. Otherwise, I'm going to do the same thing they did. So I'm trying to create a half inch deep void for the drywall to fit into. So you'll notice when I stick it up in here, I put it, put the shims so that they are out of the opening area. They're off to the sides and that way it didn't change that depth I wanted. And then once I get that screwed off and installed and it's sitting right, I'm ready to go ahead and mesh tape it. Now when I mesh tape, I like to spray adhesive everywhere first, especially on these painted surfaces, even though it's self-adhesive. It helps it stick better, not come loose while you're working it, wrinkles less, etc. So then we go ahead and apply the mesh tape and then we're ready to start putting some mud on. So I also want to point out that I'm doing this job at about half price of normal. This is a customer who the wife was going through chemo and they were having to come up with a huge chunk of money every six months to pay for her treatments. So they were just trying to sell the house to pay for that and just wanted it to look better. And besides it's plywood and everything. So I offered to do it for a lot less than normal. So I didn't necessarily do the absolute top quality job. I mean, this house had just bad drywall or not even drywall plywood everywhere, but they were trying to sell it to raise money for the chemo. So I did twice as much as I would normally do for that price, but it still came out really good. So first thing I did here was just spread a bunch of mud on it 
just trying to lock everything down and get a little bit of the shape going here. You're not trying to fix one that's this bad in one fell swoop. And then I got the uh, skim coating blade out to see if that would help. And it did help a little bit, but it helped more once I got the contour shaped a little better. So I ended up coming back and just putting a lot more mud on. It was still sticking down more than I realized. And I just started working it with my 14 inch knife because there was just too much of a hump to get out the skim coating blade yet. But you'll see in a minute, it eventually does start helping. So I just worked it until I got a decent shape with this 14 and then I was ready to go on to the second coat. So then after that dried, the next day I just came back and started putting quite a bit more mud on again because I'm trying to extend that hump out probably um, 20 inches or so on each side away from the joint tape. So it ends up being over four foot wide, I believe. And just get a decent taper. Now I'm going to do a skip trowel on this entire ceiling which will help hide a lot of these defects because in the other room we actually had a bunch of really bad joints so I fixed like I say about twice as many of those as I said I would and by doing a skip trial on everything it just helped hide everything it really looked good when it was done so now that I got it roughed in I brought brought out the uh, 40 inch skim coating blade this one is a Marshalltown but I'll have links down below to level five and you can get 10% off anything you buy using my link. And you can see here that it's still kind of rough, but it comes out a lot better this time. Next, I brought in this vacuum uh, sander. I was actually doing a demo review of this. I will put a link to this in the description down below if you want to get it. This particular sander doesn't need a vacuum. It has its own kind of blower and a vacuum bag that just sits on the floor. Actually worked pretty good, but I was using too aggressive of sandpaper here and most of these can't keep up when you do that. So that's why you see some of the dust escaping. I switched to a finer grit and it worked a lot better. So after that, after knocking off the edges and the high spots, I'm ready for more mud. But this time we're going to go with a USG plus three. This is a lightweight, all-purpose, and when I'm not needing to put it on so thick and or if I don't need it to set up so I can coat it again right away, this works great because it's easier to sand when it's done, and overall it's just easier to work with it. It doesn't set up in your pan. You don't have to wash it up in between coats. It's um, just a lot easier, but the hot mud definitely has its place, so... We're just going to get a bunch of mud spread on here and smooth it out one more time. So after looking it over a little, I could see it needed one more pass. So I just kind of backed up, did one more pass and look at how smooth that comes out. This is why I love these big skimming blades. Still had a little bit of a hump in the middle. So I moved it over to the right, put more pressure on the right side. And that's going to leave one minor lap mark down the middle. And then I'll hit it with the drywall sander again. And this time I am using, I believe, 150 grit. And you'll notice that the dust comes out right there. And that's because I wasn't holding enough pressure. I was looking down at something. As long as you keep enough pressure, you'll see very little dust gets by these. Just don't try and sand that much mud that fast. And they work pretty dang good. So here it is, dry and sanded. And that's the finished. Here's the before and the after for a little comparison. But I hope you found this helpful. And if you're interested in these things, check out the description down below. We also have a website with a lot of good information on it. And I thank you all for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, everybody.